Commissioner and Chair of the Commissioners. I wanted to say good morning and then I will introduce you to Dr. Damsker, the head of our health department, and Scott Forster, our Director of Emergency Management, and my two colleagues who will have comments. The first thing I want to say from Bucks County is that you should stay safe, stay home, and stay six feet apart. And that is why you, you don't see all of us on the camera today, it's because we are staying six feet apart. Your county government is closed in terms of the offices. We are, however, functioning and essential services are being delivered. For example, the WIC office will be open, the health department is open, if there's a tax issue, you can call tax claim, and there is an 800 number behind me that you can call for any questions that you have. Please don't call 911 if you just have a question. Call the 800 number. We are supporting the governor's effort to have people stay home. We would encourage you only to leave for emergencies like the pharmacy or the food store. I would specifically request people only go one person per carload or for per a family into the food store. When you use it as a social environment and you take someone with you, you are putting people at risk. So just go one at a time. Um, the first person I'd like to introduce you to is Dr. Dansker, and he will update you on the medical situation. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, good morning. So uh, for an update today, uh, we have approximately 69 cases. Um, by the time this press conference is done, we probably will have more. Uh, we do have cases rolling in on a regular basis. And that's a good thing. Uh, that means the, we do see an increased um, uh, access to testing, which is what we want. Um, we do have approximately uh, three people that are hospitalized, uh, two of which are more critical. One is serious but stable. Um, we do have at least five or six people that have been fully taken off of um, uh, isolation. They're healthy. We have several dozen more people that are getting close to being released from isolation. So. Uh, the good news is that most of our patients are doing very well and are eligible to be off isolation within the next few days. Um, we, a big change is because we're seeing more and more community spread, meaning that most of our cases now coming in, um, we do have some that are contacts to confirm cases, but a lot of them are just, we're not sure where they got it from, but we're seeing that more and more. So from a health department perspective to maintain resources, we are going to be uh, focusing our contact tracing on meaning the people that are, are contacts to those cases on healthcare workers, first responders, uh, people who work in nursing homes, jails, those kinds of situations that have a major impact on lots of other people uh, and potentially people with underlying conditions. Um, we want to really emphasize to people that uh, if you aren't really sick, if you can stay home and you're feeling well enough, you just, but you're just nervous, you may have coronavirus, those are not the people that we want to rush out and be tested. People that can stay home comfortably, even if you're not feeling great, if you're if you don't feel if you're not short of breath, if you don't have any major symptoms, we're asking people not to overwhelm emergency rooms just to get a test. Now that said, if someone is not feeling well, if they feel like they're, they're, they're short of breath, they can't go up the stairs without without um, without being short of breath, those kind of situations, high high fevers, of course, we encourage people to seek medical care. Um, but the hospitals are going to certainly uh, need the resources to take care of our sickest patients, and. Um, you know, I think it's very important for people to realize that the testing capability is growing. Uh, LabCorp, Quest, um, you know, there, there's, there's three or four hospitals that have the capability of doing testing with a doctor's prescription. So if you feel like you need to get a test, call your doctor, get permission, get a prescription, um, because most, almost all testing sites do require that at this point. Um, we do want to, again, we want to save the testing as well for those that are most critical. Uh, we do, we are acting uh, again, as Commissioner Marcega said, the health department is open. We're fielding lots of phone calls. We've had uh, uh, more than 2,000 phone calls over the last week, um, individual phone calls. We have had hundreds of emails and other communications. Um, and we have sometimes about 50 people constantly staffing our call centers to handle those phone calls. Uh, in, in addition to doing contact tracing and everything else, we have 35 members of our medical reserve corps that have come to help us as well, uh, dealing with, uh, with, with uh, whether it's running specimens to the state lab, whether it's answering phone calls, whether it's, um, you know, again, making contacts to those uh, confirmed cases and, and other things like that. So we have a lot of people working on this and a seven days a week operation. And, uh, you know, we're, we're working hard, but we're protecting Bucks County as best we can. I'd like to introduce uh, Scott Forster from Emergency Management. Thank you, David. Good morning. Uh, I'd like to update everyone on the uh, public safety approach and the, uh, the coordination of the county's 
uh, public safety, as well as hospitals, school districts, long-term care organizations um, that we've been working at. The County Emergency Operations Center continues to be active uh, with uh, anywhere between a dozen and two dozen people a day. We have multiple different uh, county departments that come into the, uh, the Emergency Operations Center, as well supported by uh, many of our volunteer groups. Uh, we've done a lot of planning uh, for this event as this has been going on, uh, looking forward to the upcoming days, weeks as we move forward. Um, yesterday we had a lot of our volunteer organizations come in to support us to get ready, um, to ready a plan in case we had to do mass community food distribution. Uh, think about the concept of if folks are without work for several weeks and, um, and they have the, the basic needs of, of eating, we have to ensure a way that we can have a process to get food out to the families of, of Bucks County. So um, we've worked with the Red Cross, we've worked with the Salvation Army, the Bucks County Opportunity Council, many other county agencies to ensure that we can do that. Uh, we've done many other planning uh, activities uh, over the last couple of days and, and we'll continue over the next weeks on medical surge. Uh, what do we do when we have a significant amount of medical cases, if that is the case, um, how are we going to treat them? What happens if the emergency rooms and the hospitals don't have bed availability? We have been working to ensure that we have plans to do that. Um, resource requests uh, are huge. Uh, we've received over 400 resource requests from public safety organizations, from hospitals, from long-term care organizations, to provide them with personal protective equipment. We're working very diligently to provide them with N95 masks, uh, surgical gowns, uh, face shields, gloves, all kinds of things in order to protect their, their person as they take care and treat uh, the ill people um, from the, the COVID-19 or people who may po possibly have the, the COVID-19. Uh, we've already given out um, thousands of of N95 masks and, and uh, other personal protective equipment. Um, we have, uh, we're expecting uh, about 30,000 more N95 masks to be delivered, as well as other personal protective equipment that we'll be giving out. There are some resource sources that are still very scarce and it's difficult to acquire those, but we continue to work to, to do that. We have a lot of communications every day that go on between the hospitals, public safety, as well as the long-term care organizations and different community organizations. Together as a whole community approach, we will be strong, we will be successful um, in taking care of our residents, as well as in providing whatever kind of care and services that we need um, here in Bucks County. Um, thank you. We will take questions in a couple minutes, but I also want to ask when we do, we will stay six feet apart, so give us a second to get up here. I'd like to introduce Commissioner Bob Harvey. Thank you. Uh, I want to commend first off the employees we have here in this county who have been working uh, incredibly hard. Uh, the two gentlemen who you see here, Dr. Dan Skur and Scott Forrester, who just spoke, uh, have really been uh, putting in, uh, in, in unbelievable hours, uh, and their staffs have as well. Uh, the room you're in right now after you leave will get sort of repopulated uh, by the emergency personnel who are at these tables, at these laptops constantly uh, trying to prepare us for this, um, we hope anyway, once a century kind of uh, situation. Um, in terms of the economic impact, uh, we know obviously a lot of focus on what's happening uh, in Washington uh, and we don't yet know what uh, the uh, recovery package will look like. Uh, here at the county level, we are doing what we can uh, to help businesses, uh, business owners, employees of those businesses that have been affected by this uh, to try and, and bridge this gap from now until sometime uh, when there's a, there's a recovery. Um, we've already worked with the Bucks County Development Authority uh, on a package uh, that will provide uh, zero interest loans, small loans to businesses uh, in Bucks County. Uh, because of where that money is coming from, because the fund it's coming from, there are some restrictions on where it can be used. Uh, and that sort of segues into the next point, uh, 
uh, we're hoping that whatever comes out of Washington and whatever comes out of Harrisburg uh, will allow some of these funds which are restricted to only certain kinds of activities and only certain areas. Uh, we're hoping those restrictions get lessened uh, to make it easier for us to help these businesses that are suffering. Um, we also want to make sure that people understand the Consumer Protection uh, Department here at Bucks County uh, is still operating. Uh, one of the things they are doing is investigating cases uh, of price gouging. And so if you're hearing about stores, uh, if you're hearing about businesses that you believe are uh, engaged in that kind of illegal activity, uh, you can reach out. Again, that's one of the options for the phone number that's over my shoulder. Um, finally, it, you know, we've mentioned this a couple times. I know there's some things on social media about trying to help out as much as you can local businesses. And so we would ask, uh, again, if it's financially feasible for you, if it's something you can do safely uh, to, to order in. Um, you know, restaurants are open for takeout. Um, the governor's order mm -hmm. is essentially asking people if you're going to be picking up from a restaurant to do it from outside, not necessarily inside, uh, you can have food delivered if that's something you're comfortable with. Uh, but just these little acts once a week, as much as you can do it uh, in your own situation, is something that could help bridge the gap for some of these businesses. And we know gift cards as well. If you can buy gift cards from your local businesses, obviously that's giving them cash now. That uh, that card, uh, will, will, you can use it at any point in the future. So it's another thing that you can do, another step you can take to help out. And now, uh, Commissioner DiGirolamo. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, good to see everybody today. Uh, the one thing I want to, the message I want to get out is that I very much support what Governor Wolf is doing and his announcement yesterday. Uh, but I also want to tell everybody in Bucks County to please stay calm. Take this seriously, but please stay calm and make sure your family is calm. And I don't want to go back over, you know, we all know we have to wash our hands and six feet apart from people. But now, under Governor Wolf's new order, we have to stay home as much as possible. And that means everybody. I mean, we cannot be going out and doing things that we normally do. We have to stay apart from one another if we do not want this virus to spread. Some people have to go to work if their business is essential. People have to go certainly out shopping for food or maybe some other places they have to go, like to the pharmacy to pick up medicine. But other than those occasions, I am asking and pleading with the people of Bucks County to stay home with your family. You're allowed out. You want to go take a walk, take the dog out for a walk, or maybe go out for a run. That is permissible. But other than those few occasions, stay calm, stay safe, and stay home. And I also want to echo what Commissioner Harvey said about our employees here in Bucks County. I mean, this is a 24 times 7 operation. Not only the elected officials, but also all the other employees who are deemed essential and are reporting for work each and every day. Believe me, we take this very seriously and we are doing everything we can to protect the health, the welfare, and the safety of the residents of Bucks County. And I say this all the time, we're going to get through this. We're going to get through this together as, all, as long as we're all on the same page and follow the rules and the regulations that have been set out up there by not only Governor Wolf, but the County of Bucks. Thank you. One more mention, if you were having a substance abuse or a mental health issue, the number over my right shoulder is where you should call. If you have any questions please, for anything on this issue on the coronavirus, please use the 1-800 number over my left shoulder. We'll take questions now. Could we, uh, uh, what was the number of the N95 masks that are being ordered again? 
So the N95 masks, we've delivered about 7,000 so far, and uh, we have about 30,000 um, that we have ordered or have requested from the Strategic National Stockpile Combination. And in fact, uh, is the 911 center being sort of core in the emergency communications department for about half a million dollars a year? Um, I don't think we really talked about the, the, what's the staff here doing to keep themselves safe? I mean, I know they're indoors, you know, but I'm sure that's gotta be a concern. The, um, the 911 center and the emergency operations center work hand in hand to ma manage emergencies. Um, as, as Commissioner Marseglia said at the beginning, I would ask that if um, people want to report non-essential businesses that are open or have questions or things that they want to communicate with the county about the COVID-19 event and it's not an emergency, you're not calling for medical assistance or, or police assistance or fire assistance, we need to use that 1-800 number um, because our call takers and our dispatchers need to be available to handle emergencies and protect the public uh, on a regular on a regular basis. Um, working together, we are ensuring that we keep going over all of the same things. Um, you know, the hand washing, the trying to stay six feet apart. We have extra cleaning that's being done in the building to ensure the the safety of the employees. Um, we we check temperatures of every employee. Uh, when they arrive here at work and if they leave uh, the property to even go and get a coffee when they come back they have their temperature checked again um, we are doing the best that we could to ensure that we have the uh, the employees protected okay just one last question i know that it's uh, not uncommon for police officers to also respond on scenes of emergency calls with, with ambulances depending on the situation um these would be municipal police forces so maybe it's outside of this purview but any idea is that is that still the standard <coughs> practice or are the police trying to keep their distance from potentially sick people so it, it is the decision of the local police department but to say that um, we have sent out guidance to local police and to the fire service that runs quick response squad calls um, with the EMS to evaluate the types of calls that they still want to respond on um, if it's a flu-like symptoms call or a febrile respiratory distress call, um, maybe you don't go. Maybe you don't expose your, um, your police officer or your fire personnel to that situation. The least amount of people that we could expose to somebody that may be COVID-19, um, the better off we'll be. Now the police uh, and the fire department do sometimes respond and they wait outside, they assist the ambulance folks with going to get them things, bringing them up to the door and, and so on, you know, uh, those kinds of uh, functions. But um, if you don't have to go, we've already asked them don't go. And a lot of the municipalities have already changed their response protocols that only ambulances are going to medical calls and not the uh, fire and, and police um, response for those types of incidents. Speaking of that, Northampton County has instituted something where state police and a bunch of local departments have developed a partnership in case one department gets decimated with COVID-19. Is there anything like that um, being considered or uh, looked at for Bucks County? Yes, the uh, police chiefs had a meeting um, with, uh, with Dr. Damsker, with the district attorney, and they have regular conversations here with the EOC. All of the municipalities in Bucks County can receive mutually assistance from other police departments, ambulance services, or fire departments. Um, we do have mutually agreements in, in place to be able to do that. Um, and and we, we support each other with response at every day. No, the state police or just other, other departments? Uh, state police will respond to assist municipalities as well when requested. I wanna ask about the stay at home order. Uh, how is it being enforced? I know people can go out and walk their dogs and go for a run. What can't they do? What What are we? What's the difference between now and last week with social distancing with the stay at home? So, a lot of the actions are are still the same, um, and and what we're asking people to do is still the same. We we did not change our posture except for um, we're trying to make it more stringent for people to stay home. We still want people to stay home. We still want people to do social distancing. 
Uh, we understand people need to go to the gas station and the grocery store and the pharmacy and the doctor's office, but if you don't have to go out to any of those essential life-sustaining services, then, then you should stay home, other than maybe going for a walk or a run or something in the neighborhood. But we don't want people going out in groups. And if people do go to the grocery store, you don't have to take the whole family. Maybe just one person go so that the aisles of the grocery store are not so congested, so that you, you can keep that distance and there aren't so many people um, coming together in one location. I don't pick, I'm going to answer that also. We have closed our parks, so that is one new thing. The other thing is if anybody sees a business that they don't think should be open, they can call that 1-800 number and report it, not dial 911. Um, and our restaurant inspectors are out there making sure that the restaurants are only takeout or brick deliver, that, you, that no one's going in there. Um, I just would add, this is why this is important. I went out the other day and there was a small accident near my house. So there were three people out of their car, because there was three cars, and a police officer. That's one of the reasons you want to stay home. That isn't a good idea for people to be interacting when they don't need to, because that's what can happen. Other questions? Yes, ma'am. What conversations, and there may have been none, uh, have happened between the county and Governor Wolf's office regarding the possibilities of the use of the National Guard in enforcement in days to come? Uh, I'll tell you that at this point, we haven't had the discussion of the National Guard to enforce the stay at home order but we do know that the National Guard is available for many other resource requests uh, if we need them for manpower assistance if we need them for medical surge uh, many different things the National Guard can provide to us but we have not had those conversations about mandatorily putting people in their homes and keeping them there under what would be almost be like a martial law uh, situation. Yes, sir, but to follow up with the uses that you mentioned, excluding enforcement, are you seeing those coming closer to reality than helping out possibly with testing and other duties? Well, depending on how big the situation gets and all of the different services that we may have to put into place, like medical surge, uh, um, food distribution, um, additional security, uh, I do see the possibility that we would need the National Guard down the road. But are we there yet? No. Um, you know, the, the people of Bucks County have been very calm. Things have been very orderly. We are in the midst of planning. Uh, we want to use as many VOAD organizations as we can, volunteer organizations that are active in disasters. Um, we don't want to um, exhaust, a, you know, the National Guard right out front. But if we need them, we will call them. And we know that the National Guard could come to assist us on, on many different things. Thank you for that. And I would preface this next question by saying it's not a Bucks County question. It could be asked in any county in the nation. How closely are we relying on the data revealed from testing? When we're hearing from places like Tuscaloosa that half of the tests aren't any good that they administered over the last week, when we know that we're not getting enough tests out to everyone that wants to get tested, only the ones that check off certain boxes, how concerned are we for this area between those who are tested and those who just aren't tested and maybe want to get a test but can't get one. There's a wide, wide world out there of people that aren't getting tested that could be infected. Yeah, we, we see this on a regular basis. Um, for instance, let's say we have a confirmed case and they have, uh, you know, they live with their son and their son develops mild symptoms that could be, coron could be coronavirus, it could be the flu, it could be other things. Uh, if that son in that household is not not, not that sick. Um, we're asking at this point, we don't believe you need to be tested. So are we, we're probably missing cases that way. Right. Uh, we're under-reporting. Um, but the problem is, as at this point, if we ask all those people to run to urgent care or to run to their doctor or the, or the ERs to get tested, um, we are now taking up valuable time and resources from the emergency room. So yes, are we undercounting the cases? We probably are. Um, and I think you'll see over time when all those cases get counted, it will lower, uh, I've said this before, it'll lower the fatality rate because we're missing some of those things. But we also, have to, it's more important at this day, you know, as of, as of today, we do need to conserve the testing and the medical staff that are doing them. And, um, and I'll, I'll reemphasize that again. If you are at home and you're doing okay, there's no reason for you to get tested. You could have, a, there's, there's a whole respiratory viral panel that we have. There's, there's a lot of viruses going around. We've had people that are close contacts to cases 
that we assume they are, but they get tested for whatever reason or another, and they're negative. So not everybody with a runny nose or a fever or a cough has coronavirus, and I think that's really important for the overall community to understand that as well. Um, even close contacts to cases may not have it. And doctor, thank you for all that. This is my last yeah. follow-up. Are you at all afraid that that gap between that, that the gap in testing may turn around and come back to bite us? Um, I, if we all stay at home and do the things that are being told, um, even if those people are positive, you know, if they're staying home for seven days and they end up getting better and they're no longer infectious, um, you know, those people shouldn't play a major role in transmission, which is the whole point of the stay-at-home order. It takes all that into account. So um, if you're staying at home, even if you have coronavirus, you're not out there spreading it, except maybe to your family members, maybe not. Um, and if we do this for a long enough period, for a couple of weeks, those people's viruses won't get out to the public. So I agree with you that there's, a, there's, there's definitely a gap. And I think over time, uh, we'll be able to capture more of those. When testing becomes so available that anyone can get it, um, and we have open testing sites that are maybe not at ERs, and uh, places where they're only open for testing, and there's no, there's no issues with um, resources, then you'll start to see more people getting tested that'll be positive and say, hey, you know what, I had a runny nose, I wasn't feeling that bad, and we can do more data epidemiologically that'll help us figure out you know, how many people really were infected. But we're just not there yet. Thank you. I wanted to ask about stay at home again. How is it going to be enforced? Are, are people going to be broken up if they are gathering in groups? Or what happens if the number gets called? Do the police come and shut the business down? What happens? Um, so we, we did have, in the last two days, yesterday and Sunday, uh, we participated in conference calls with the governor uh, and Secretary Levine and other um, county officials from southeastern Pennsylvania. In fact, we'll have another conference today at 12 o'clock. We're having regular for the past two weeks almost, regular conference calls with the Southeastern Pennsylvania elected officials, the Collar counties and the city. Um, the question of enforcement uh, did come up to the governor. Uh, it is being left up to local law enforcement. Um, as he said, and, and we'll echo this, we're, we're hoping for certainly progressive uh, enforcement of this. Uh, if police departments are seeing people congregated uh, in areas that they see, you know, a lot of kids out, you know, playing basketball on, on, on outside because it's going to be somewhat nice uh, for most of this week. Um, they're, they likely would, would certainly just ask those kids to go home. Not supposed to be out. Um, you know, if they see people congregating outside of some business, they may just rely on people, stay six feet apart. We're also asking business owners to do that. If you have people waiting outside your business for to pick up food, you know, please just remind them try to stay six feet apart. You know, um, but. As of right now, it's, it's, it's really being left up for local law enforcement. So there that. wouldn't be a ticket, a fine, anything like that? What we're looking at for, I mean, as Commissioner Marseille said, our health department uh, does have uh, supervision over things like restaurants, barber shops, beauty parlors, nail salons, things like that. They would normally do health inspections for, uh, for restaurants because they are technically still open on a takeout basis. Those inspections are still continuing. Uh, but they are also tasked, those health inspectors, with uh, keeping an eye out for businesses that they might have supervision over uh, because you know, when things get severe, they, we can pull the licenses from those businesses if they're outside that. Uh, but as of right now, we're just trying to get people to, to you know, voluntarily go along with this order and, and hopefully take uh, the step seriously. I mean, we're obviously not the only um, area. The state hasn't gone, the whole Commonwealth hasn't gone to a stay-at-home order, but um, certainly the, the areas, the counties that have had uh, the largest uh, numbers of cases, including us, are involved in that. Um, other states around us have gone steps further. Um, I think the governor is hoping that, that the majority of people uh, will just follow this order and it won't have to be a Commonwealth-wide order. Dr. Damsker, yes. you said the total so far is 69. How much of a rise is that from yesterday? Uh, we end, I think it's uh, eight now. Um, so eight from yesterday? Yeah, every day we're getting, um, you know, the, depending on when the batches come in, there's multiple labs running them now. So, um, you know, there's, a, there's labs where the PA NEDS is the, is the state uh, system where we receive, all laboratories are supposed to be putting it in something called PA NEDS. It's the uh, statewide uh, surveillance system. And some of the labs are relatively new at this, so they're, they, they're taking 24 hours to put them in the system or they're calling us. So we're getting lab results of a lot of people that we don't know about, clearly. When we first started doing this, we were ordering all the tests to the state lab, and so we knew who we were testing and those positive. But now we're getting results just, you know, this person, we get a call from a hospital, we get a call from a laboratory, we get a call from an urgent care, um, and, and so we get, we get literally results in throughout the day. 
Um, and yesterday we had over 20 cases and anticipate that those numbers are probably going to continue, you know, just from the increased testing. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, the vast majority that we're getting are people that are not that sick or mildly ill or moderately ill even. Um, and that's a, that's a good thing, I think, for the public to hear is that um, while we do have a few cases that are hospitalized uh, pretty seriously, um, the overall numbers are not those people. So that's, that's a little bit of good news. We hope that continues. So eight from yesterday, eight more than Yes. That. Dr. Dan, <coughs> the uh, three people that are in the, the hospital, um, can you recap the condition again? I think one yeah, I, I, two are, are more critical and one is stable. I have a question about businesses. Um, perhaps it might be for uh, Commissioner Marceglia or uh, Commissioner Harvey, but um, we have the list of the life sustaining businesses uh, that came out when the governor uh, made the order. Uh, they use uh, titles from the NAI SC code. Um, if I'm if I'm looking at that list, it doesn't really tell me much. If I'm going down the street and I see a business that's open, I can't look at that list and say, well, they shouldn't be open. Is there any is there any way that can, is there any clearer guidance? Like if we see the the candle shop on the corner, is that, that well, the candle shop I would say is probably not life sustaining. You can call the number or send us an email, and we'll ask. Just as an FYI, this morning I saw a lot of landscape trucks out, so I called and found out. They are okay. They can go out. They may not be life-sustaining, but they're outside. So, I, you know, we got to take it one at a time. There is a whole list. Um, another question. Is there a way, do, do first responders know, are they told that they're responding to a potential COVID-19 case when they're responding? Or... So the 911 center has a uh, process where they ask certain questions. Uh, they go down, it's, it's like an epi checklist, or whether people have traveled, do they have certain uh, symptoms, things like that. We do then provide to the to the responders that type of information. Um, so, I mean, we can't tell them for sure they're going to a COVID-19 case, but we do we do ask the right questions uh, the best we could to to kind of. Uh, figure that out, and then we do provide that information to the response organizations as, the, as they're going. Has the county seen an uptick in 911 calls and responses, or a decrease with more people staying inside? Actually, the, the 911 call um, count is actually lower because uh, we have had most of a lot of the people staying inside. We have less traffic accidents, um, you know, less general types of emergency 911 calls. So. Our call volume is down a little bit, but it's you know it goes in uh, ebb and flow. So sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. Okay. Uh, is the same for police in terms of them being notified if they're responding somewhere if there's a possible COVID-19? Yes. Yeah. Same. Same thing. Well, I just want to mention one more thing to add on to that. Um, we do tell all of our cases um, uh, that that you know, all of our 70 cases that we can tell. If you do have to call 911, if someone in your family has to call 911 to let them know that you are coronavirus positive, and that has actually worked uh, just the other day. Uh, there's been two instances now uh, where someone was in the home who was coronavirus positive, and they told the you know arriving first responders, and so they were they knew ahead of time, which is really good. We we we, we tell that to all of our cases. Please let 911 911 know if you are positive. And that gives our first responders an opportunity to make sure they're using all the proper PPE and protect them going forward. Yeah. So I'm going to apologize you, right? Well, no, I, I, I had a question on the, uh, the call types, and this might, um, I, I don't know who people are. I've, I've got a database of seven years of 911 calls in the county, so I'm basing this off of that. Uh, respiratory distress is among the top five calls for EMS, especially. Um, are those call types considered COVID-19, or are they, I mean, because they are so common, are they kind of being well, there are other uh, symptoms of COVID-19 than just respiratory distress. And when you go through that call, um, the, the questionnaire of the caller, uh, they will ask uh, medical histories on somebody could have emphysema or asthma or what other types of symptoms that they're having. So they do try to um, figure out what the, the situation may be in the best way that they can to gather information, and then they let the responding uh, ambulance service know. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.